downstairs at my little table, my home away from home. But um, thank you for having me as your guest in Vancouver. It's been extraordinary. Vancouver is one of my favorite cities, and you are some of my favorite people. There's nothing like, um, gosh, the hospitality that's extended from everyone and the friendliness of the Vancouverians and the environs. So um, thank you very much. Okay. So I hope you guys have some awesome questions. Just so you know, when you want to ask a question, please wind up over here and step here one by one and ask away. And if there's any problem and you don't want to come up or you, you can't or feel uncomfortable, raise your hand and I'll come down to you. All right. Okay? So but it's easier if you line up because then everybody can see you. So Super while, stars. Okay. Exactly. Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so while we, uh, if you guys would like to stand up and make your way I over to the microphone. Come on in, we're just starting. We're going to play a quick game of 20 questions and see how many of these questions, they're really fast ones, Miss Taylor can answer in a minute. This is a, a really good challenge. All right. Okay. So if you don't know the answer or don't have one, just say pass and we'll okay. go from there. All okay. right. Ready? One, two, yes. three. Favorite Pokemon? Pikachu. Best doctor from Doctor Who? David Tennant. Coke or Pepsi? Ooh, Coke. Game of Thrones or Stranger Things? Doctor Who. Okay. <laughs> Android or iPhone? Oh, oh iPhone. Looney I'm a nerd. Looney Tunes, Animaniacs, or Tiny Tunes? Animaniacs. One of your hobbies? Soccer. Best Golden Girl? Best Golden Girl? All of them. Okay. Are you kidding? <laughs> um, yeah, gosh. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to have to go with B. Arthur because she's been, she was Maud also, so let's go with that. But all of them are my favorite. If you could be any animal in the world, what would you be? B. Arthur? No, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> all the answers given would be any in uh, Black Panther all right. or, or uh, Bird of Prey. What were you like in high school? This. <laughs> <laughs> Last show you watched on TV. Oh, oh, I just watched the Foo Fighters play the Acropolis on public TV on Friday night which was an incredible thing. Excellent. I know, that's super nerdy, isn't it? Is oh, that right. it? Oh, no, there's still a few more, but okay. that's okay. Do you want to do the last one? Yes, piece? yes. Perfect. It's Favorite. exciting for me. I don't know how interesting it is for you. <laughs> Favorite 80s song? 80s? Uh, 80s? All of them? I don't know. I can't answer that. That's okay. No worries. Uh, what... When were the 80s? It seems like all time is compressed, right? <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm Sailor Pluto, okay? Yes. There is no time for me, it comes together. Yeah. Um, I don't, all music goes together, it's all played at the same time on the radio now. So. Pretty much, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go with Andy Gibb. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? An actor. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many pennies would fit into this room? Pennies? Are we talking about, what's the, that terrible clown? Penny, penny? Pennywise? Oh, penny no, no. <laughs> I don't That's know all I can think of. Ten. Okay. <laughs> because all of us would leave. Um, a lot of pennies. And anyway, none because don't you not have pennies anymore in we Canada? Don't. That's right. So, zero. How many American pennies? Oh, American pennies. <laughs> That's uh, okay. I'm keeping all of those. Weak pennies. Who would win in a fight between Spider Man and Batman? Oh, no fighting, man. Just peace. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Books, like paper books or e books? Oh, paper. Thank Definitely. You. Come to my house. Well, you, only one of you could fit in at a time because it's a tiny apartment, but I, we have mostly books there. Excellent. A uh, dream celebrity to work with? Oh, you know what? I don't have a person, but I love working with people who are passionate about what they do in, in anything. So um, it, it's just people who love what they're doing and are committed to doing the best that they can do. Excellent. Very nice answer. Uh, name a language you'd like to learn. All of them. Oh. My dream superpower is to speak every language and understand every language in the world. Very nice. I know French a little, so it would be to speak that better. Also. <laughs> cool. Well, um, merci. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. Is that what you said? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Tattoos, piercings, or au naturel? Oh, tattoo, piercing. Um... I have pierced ears, that's as pierced as I go. Fair so, enough. yeah. Tattoos, I can't commit to anything, so <laughs> that's not for me. And cats, dogs, or ferrets? Uh, fairies. Fairies. I would love to have some fairies around the house. Excellent. Um, but, but I like all pets, actually. Lizards are my favorite. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, this is like how I just turn it away from the question yep. to answer whatever <laughs> That's I want. okay. I love it. <laughs> and that's it for the 20 questions portion. Woo, so. Thank you for sitting through Thanks, that. Okay. Um, very exciting. Okay. All right, yes. so feel free to come on up. We have a lot of questions. I'll try to keep my answers shorter than those. Sounds <laughs> fun. Yeah. 
Which characters have you lent your natural voice to? Probably um, April O'Neil in Ninja Turtles is closest to my real voice. Um, um, I like to think that all of them are somewhat different, but uh, I narrate a lot of audiobooks, and a lot of that has my natural voice as the narrator a lot. So um, that's probably the closest. Yukino in his and her circumstances is closer to my real voice. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, good to see you again. Hi, can I get a high five, a fist bump, a hug, and a picture? All right, how about at the end of this? Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was it in mime. Yes. Hi. Hi. Good, to here. good to see you, Ash. <laughs> Looking good. I challenge you to a Pokemon battle. Okay, right here? Uh, I got my Pokeball. <laughs> I let the guys back in the Pokemon oh, Center. Damn. Well, uh, just ask your question then. Alright, questions about breaking into the biz, like, okay. the question, like, are there any of you big names, like yourself, or Rob Paulson, or Maurice LaMarche, or the rest of it, they'd be, like, mentor types, mm -hmm. like, I know Nancy Cartwright was apprentice to Doss Butler, and Henry Shear was an apprentice to Mel Blanc, is, is apprenticing to the big names one way that aspiring voice actors can get into the biz? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know, because I haven't... That hasn't been my experience, so I can only speak to my experience, although that sounds amazing. And to be able to work with people that you admire um, and that they can, um, you know, like we all learn something from everyone when we work together or when we have a chance to chat, even when I get to talk to you all at my little booth, I'm always learning something. So um, for me, my kind of road to get to where I am today has just been to, um, study as much as possible. I had great acting teachers and I learned from them. I didn't study to be a voice actor, but I studied to be an actor. And, um, and I use those tools every day when I work in any capacity because my life as an actor is about um, doing cartoons and audiobooks and language programs and phone answering systems and um, so many different jobs I have that have nothing to do with acting, but I make them about acting. So um, ultimately, I think, in my opinion, the best thing is a liberal arts education where you're learning how to learn, and you're learning about everything, about science and language and uh, politics and you know everything, and your craft, and that you then um, are able to apply all of that because I, I use all of that every time I create a character. Um, so for me, it was that and then networking with people. Well, I remember Stuart recommending like do something like a, like intern around a radio station and work your yeah, way Yeah, that's what he did too. You know, the thing about it is ultimately you, you follow your passion. I, I love being on stage and much of my background is theater. And so, and that's, that's what I've always done and that's kind of gotten me where I am now. He went that direction and then through that is how he kind of, a door opened. So you, if you love film, work at a movie theater. Do something so that you're constantly involved with people who do what you want to do, people who are inspiring and creative. And then doors open in unexpected ways quite often. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I want to ask, uh, what Pokemon games have you played and or uh, and enjoyed? Uh... Well, I'm a, a bit of a, a nerd when it comes to video games because we have no consoles at home. So mm, I would say most of the games, pretty much all of the games I've done voices on, I've never seen. Um, I have a DS and I've played Pokemon Red on that, and um, that's it. Um, I, I have Pokemon Go, of course, on my phone, and I play that irregularly. I'm the worst trainer ever. Um, but but uh, I, I'm much more in the arcade games, like Galaga, my, that's my jam. Man. Um, but I don't carry that around with me. Although I do have it on my phone, but it's not the same to me, like, sweating and hitting the buttons. And oh, yes. I like that. Um, yeah, so, and when I catch a Pikachu or something on Pokemon Go, I do say, I caught a Pikachu! 
Um, so that's quite rewarding for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, good to see you again. Good to see you too. Nice Pikachu. Digging it. Thank you. I can do an impression of James from Team Rocket. Oh, okay. James from Team Rocket. Look, I captured Pikachu. Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> hey, buddy, give that back. <laughs> Although, uh, I did recognize you this time as James, when I don't normally when you're in a costume. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. What is your favorite line to do as Ash? Um, I, I love talking as Ash, even though I only do that when I'm at a convention, really. Um, I would say probably, uh, hey, buddy, you deserve a good long rest. <laughs> I liked when they had those great emotional moments, and one of the things I love about Pokemon is how real it can be, and when you can really see that partnership between Ash and Pikachu, um, that's one of my favorite things. Awesome, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Hi. Hello, um, I like your dress. Thank you, you. <laughs> I was only nervous. Uh, that's okay, don't be. I am too, that's why I'm drinking water. That's why I wrote it down. Um, what message do you think was being said when Ash never got closer to become a Pokemon master? That he always came in top eight, best four, and rarely the winner? Well, I do think it's kind of like all of our lives, where, you know, you set out, if, if you happen to be a goal setter, um, which most of us are, or we're told we should be, you set a goal to get here, and as you're working towards that goal, you often find it takes a turn and it comes around and you may get close to the goal but actually achieve something else. And ultimately, it really is the journey that matters. And if we look at Pokemon um, specifically, Ash has gone along, he's always going towards his goal to be the greatest Pokemon master in the world. And yet, along the way, what he actually achieves is meeting friends. Um, winning and losing, but learning something about himself and others the whole time, which is what we all do. How do you make friends help them achieve their goals while you too are achieving yours? And often we realize that goal that we were trying to attain isn't really as important as the one that we actually attained. So that's kind of what I picked up from it. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I have like uh, one more quick question? Sure. What was your favorite Pokemon movie voice act? Uh, I probably the first one overall because it really it was extraordinary to work on. We were in a big studio with a screen bigger than this, and it was just it, it was really uh, so different from working on the show. Um, I think that the movies got better and better as they went along. But the first one was my favorite. The first episode was my favorite. The first season, all of that stuff that kind of built a foundation that we still stand on today, essentially. Um, so the first movie, I think it had a great message too. And I think the message of friendship and love is the strongest one. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Hello, nice Pokemon there. Hello. I love that hat. Do you wear the hat too? I used to, but then Rally uh, I see. Took me, so. it. Mm. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for doing all the work you have with Ash and all the other voice actors. Oh, thank you. And my question is, I'm just curious, what was your uh, first reaction when you heard that you were doing Pokemon and based off a video game and all that, like the world of Pokemon? Yeah, I didn't really know that much about it when I auditioned. Um, when we auditioned, we got to see a tiny clip of the show because they wanted the voices to be similar. Um, so we got to hear it right before we went into audition so we could kind of match what we thought the voice was. Um, the only thing I really had heard about it was that kids had gotten seizures from it in Japan, so <laughs> somehow I still wanted to work on it. <laughs> um, but what really drew me to it was the, um, the animation style, and I love that the colors and, in a sense, how simple it was. Um, so, and also, I'm an actor, so I just want every job I audition for. Um, but I didn't realize till we were into it how great it was. Um, in the beginning, it just looked fun and um, really different from anything I'd worked on before. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello. Hey, this is Taylor. Yes. I just wanted to know about this question for you. 
How do you also portray Ash's voice in the How do you also portray Ash's voice in the English dub versions of the first few Pokemon movies? Yes, I was in the first eight seasons and the first eight movies. So everything that was associated with Pokemon then, I was Ash and May and Ash's mom and a few Pokemon and other people. Well, I've definitely seen those on television and home videos since I was young. You have not seen them since? Is that? Well, uh, actually, I do see them. Oh, okay. I, I definitely, I definitely saw them on home video and television okay. when I was when I was young, yeah. growing up in the two thousands, I think. Right. That's when they. I right think. Before I moved to our, right before we moved to our new home in Port Hardy. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're and they're on TV from time to time now too. Uh, Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Then they had some of these international airings across the world. Oh yeah, that's right. And in some countries, they change. You know, the obviously the, it's in Japanese, and then it's in English, and then it's in all different languages. And Pikachu stays the same in all languages. Yeah, I definitely know that. Yeah. I I was definitely bought. I was actually awed by the music, the animation, the special effects, yeah. the voices, yeah. etc. Yeah, four and kids did a lot to change color. that. Yeah. If it's, cool. if it's even better, I still say I give it four stars out of five. Thank you. Let's go for the five. <laughs> uh, can I get a five? Five stars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. I'm really good at it, but I I limit myself to two dollars. Um, for so eight quarters when I play Galaga once a year. <laughs> this is you now. You know too much about me. <laughs> um, um, I've really enjoyed your recent videos of Rachel on Twitter and stuff. Like oh, that. thank you. We did kooky things of driving around doing stupid voices. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of hoping, like, are you guys going to do more of that? Because it's a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know what? It's it's really just. I don't know how you guys are about getting together with people, but I'm always working on something, or I'm out of town traveling, and she's busy, and so. I, I just don't see her as much as I would like to, but yeah, we would definitely do uh, that again. You know, I liked it better that you couldn't see our faces because then it's funnier. Yeah. <laughs> personally. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, with your recommendation, I'll call her up now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Watch that. You okay? There you go. Um. Here, wait. I'm gonna move this whole thing for you. <laughs> That's another show that yeah. was on at some point. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> they, they put Ash in there, like um, huh? they made one of the and Ash thought one of the characters was uh, Pokemon. No way! Did, did you see that one? Oh yeah. Uh, no, oh, I don't even really know. Funny. Wow! It's, like, maybe it's a fire type. Or That's hilarious. It's a grass type. What's it, was, it in? It was Cell, wasn't it? Oh uh, yeah, Cell. Yeah, it's, yeah Team Four Stars. Pretty cool. Is it Ash. is it a show yeah, called? Like, is it a is, Dragon Ball? Yeah, Z bridge. now called oh abridged. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I get it now. Yeah, a, I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, he's thinking the characters of Pokemon, and it's really funny. That's really that is funny, clever. Yeah. Uh, what else? And you thought like uh, Mewtwo was this character from that show? One right. more quick question. Yeah. Out of all the movies, which one's your favorite? I do think the first one, really. Well, and I then I like the Celebi one too because I do like that environmental I, message. I, I like the Lucario one. Yeah, and the thing about uh, the Lucario movie, I can never remember what their names are, but the main Pokemon, like the Entei one, that whatever. But the in the Lucario one, Ash got to dress up in different costumes, and I really like that. Or like, remember in one episode, Ash was Ashley in the perfume store, and so for me to be a girl playing a boy playing a girl is something I just love that. So when they got to dress up as different costumes, that was my favorite. Thing. So the Lucario one is one of my favorites too. That was cool. I could go on and on. There's so many great things that I loved about working on that show, but I have to like say, oh, the first movie. Yeah, so on YouTube, it's really cool. Yeah, hey, awesome. Thank you. Buddy. Thank you. Uh,
high. You can just pull the whole, yeah, like that, that's perfect. Uh, when you work on the show, what do you do in your downtime? What do I do in my downtime? Um, uh, well, lately, uh, I've been watching a lot of the news because, I don't know, in America, the politics are a little kooky. So I've been, I've, it's taken up a lot of my time this year. So other than that, what I used to do before November 8th, 2016, <laughs> was um, I, I do a lot of art. I do um, drawing and collage and things like that. I, um, I read. I do a lot of audiobooks, so I don't have a lot of downtime. I'm always prepping some book to record, uh, so I'm reading a lot, mostly for work, not what pleasure. What's your favorite thing you draw? Um, I just like to doodle things, um, and I also make those little Pokemon card things that I give out at my booth. So I, I mostly do stuff. I'm a, so I'm a last minute doer. If I have a deadline, I can work the night before and get it all done. But I'm not a very good plan aheader. So uh, like for next year, I'm going to make a new card with my daughter, and I haven't even thought of it yet. But like the night before, we have to go somewhere. We'll probably be doing it. Um, so I'm kind of a, a last minute thing. I like to bake. Um, you know, I do normal stuff. I do a lot of stuff like drive my daughter around. That's my downtime. She's in college now, so she can drive herself. So now I have a, a lot of free time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we've got about 20 to 25 minutes left. So okay, I think good. we'll just stop the line at the very end there for now. Oh, and then I'll go faster. Time, I'll go, go faster. Okay. <laughs> no worry. You, it's only me. Look, my answers go on and on. Okay. I got a question for you from my younger cousin who isn't able to be here today. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. okay, my little cousin wants to know what's your favorite uh, Pokemon episode. Uh, my favorite Pokemon episode is the first episode. I love the fact that Ash wakes up late, which I have been known to do. And um, I love that uh, alarm clock that he has. I love the fact that he runs out in his pajamas. And I also think it's... All of us watching that, we had no idea what Pokemon was going to be. Yeah. And it's just the lead-in to like wow, I could be on this journey too. I'm like Ash. And it, I, I just think it really set the whole thing up. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Hi. I was going to say that um, you, you were my hero when I was around six years old. And oh, thank you. Ash was awesome to me. And thank you. One my favorite book episodes ever. Um, I just want to ask one more quick question. What was your favorite Pokemon? It's always been Pikachu, because I spent so much time with Pikachu, I kind of, I, I don't know, I love the relationship that they have, and that feels really real to me, and the rest of them, um, you know, you, you, have, you can have so many friends, but your mom is always your best friend, am I right? So it's the same with Pikachu, and <laughs> right? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Okay. You don't have to hurry, only I will. No rush. Um, so when you were playing Ash and May, or conversely, uh, Delia and Ash, sure. did you enjoy or despise talking to yourself? I love having scenes with myself. <laughs> you know, I would also go in a lot earlier than most, so there really were no other voices in that were laid down already, so I would get to do all of Ash's lines, and then I actually had someone to talk to in the scene. Um, because then we would go back and do all of May's lines or Ash's mom or whatever. So, um, yeah, it was really super fun to do that. That's awesome. So my second question is, how much do I need to hire you to do an audio for me? <laughs> Are you a writer? I am an aspiring writer. Yes. yes. I've self-published a trilogy, mm -hmm. um, and it would blow my mind if that was a possibility. I don't have a lot right now, so I'm asking for preparation for the future. Yeah, so why don't just come by my booth and we'll talk about that. I mean, I work mostly through publishers, like, um, you know, whatever, you name it. Um, and so those are the people who normally call me for that. Um, I haven't worked on any self-published books. Normally, audiobooks go by, um, for anyone who's aspiring to work in that, um, they go by the finished hour you get paid for it. So if a book is four hours long, once it's been edited, you get paid for four hours. Um, that's how that works. So it, it really would all depend on, on that. So yeah, you should just talk to, come to my booth and talk to me. I and we can you. see what that really means. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi. So it totally blew my mind on Friday when I looked at the uh, schedule and I saw that Ash wasn't actually voice acted by a 
13 year old boy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank so you. I'm just wondering with how big Pokemon became. I mean, everybody I know has heard Ash's voice. Right. Like, everybody's heard it. Right. Do you ever get like noticed in public? No. Ever? Because my voice is a little raspy right now because I've been talking a lot um, and, and not in a healthy way. So normally nobody knows that I do anything, really. Um, but nor do I ever go, uh, let's see, uh, can I have a milkshake? Um, I don't really do that, so maybe someone would recognize that. Um, but, and I don't answer the phone that way. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't really affected my regular life in a big way. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Hi. Good to see you. So you say that the same voice actress that voices Pikachu, pretty much voices Pikachu all over. Right. Um, have you ever met her? I haven't met any of the original Japanese actors. I would love to. I've not ever been to Japan either. Um, I don't know how often they come to the U.S., but that would be, um, that's definitely on my list of things I really would like to do. Okay, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Hello. Good to see you again. Yeah. Uh, just a question. I was wondering, um, do you have any other voices that you've like tried out for other roles that you never really got to like, actually use and just have them in stories? Or? Oh, I was going to say, you would not believe how many things I've auditioned for and not gotten. Um, that list is incredibly long. Um, I don't have uh, like a, my stock uh, voices, but but I do kind of come up with things based on the description of the characters and things like that. So um, I don't really have like, um, oh, let's see, like, um, I'd love to do something like this. There's things that I do that I talk of, like in my real life, or I pick up accents or um, voices that people actually sound like that I, I do all the time, and I haven't used those in something. Um, in an audiobook, there's a little bit more room to kind of, it depends on how, animated they want the book to be. A lot of books that I've been doing lately, they want the voices to be very toned down. I feel like when you're listening to it, you should be able to um, lose yourself in the book and know the difference between the characters. So I like to, I like to build the story around, um, uh, not bigger voices, but some vocal choices. Um, but I don't have anything that's really too crazy. Um, yeah, I always am working on something, and depending on the description that I get, a lot of the stuff I'm auditioning for now is older ladies, you know? <laughs> it's just very, really like, you know, old ladies, and old mean ladies. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but anyway, maybe that's who I really am. Not sure yet. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Hello. Hi again. Been doing a lot of thinking about the fourth Pokemon movie with yep. Selby. Yep. Well, considering that Professor Oak has done some time travel mm. into the future, I guess it wouldn't be far fetched to, to nice. suggest that he could be very well a time lord. Mm -hmm. All right, Ophelia, I just need to get a Thomas and Sonic screwdriver, and we should be well on our way. Mm, good luck with that. <laughs> oh. Um, hey, and don't forget to change your underwear, Professor Oak. As a Scotsman, I question if that's going to be a problem for me. A Scotsman? <laughs> Why don't you wear a kilt? <laughs> don't, let's not go any further with that. Professor Oak has a doctor. Thinking of uh, Yeah, I think, gosh, wouldn't he love to be a doctor? You know, like to be able to travel around, really travel. There's something I think about Professor Oak that he, he, he's like your favorite professor at school that you, he, he travels so much in his mind, but what he loves is being in the classroom. And I think Professor Oak is a little bit that way that he's quite content to be giving his knowledge where he is. Um, I think he'd take a trip though, but I think he likes that. I don't know, that's my interpretation. I'm not Professor Oak. Well, the eccentricities got me thinking he could be very well be the next doctor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we'll see. Thank you. Hello again. Hi. Um, I've been working on voice acting, mm -hmm. and my favorite voice is a Yoda voice I do. Oh, yeah. And so I was wondering what you thought about it. Okay, let's hear it. What does your Betty Jerk? That's good. I like that. What does Yoda say? What? Um, uh, I don't know. I'll just do this voice. Um, I feel like, uh, I wish I were Luke 
Skywalker and we could really work together. Mm. I could be an awesome Jedi, Yoda. Mm. Toy Yoda. Mm. Toy Yoda. Toy Yoda. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi again. Um, just a curious question. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you met the singer who does the Pokemon theme song? Uh, is that Jason? Yeah, Jason. Who, I met him at a convention. Oh. Yeah. Really? Because, quite honestly, all of the elements, like music and stuff for any of the movies or the series, we never, we, all I did was go in and work and leave, and they never had a time where they were like, oh, these are the people singing the song, let's all get together and meet or whatever. So I actually never knew who sang it at all or any of that stuff. The only singing I know anything about is the Pokemon Christmas Bash album that we did. Um, I know who was singing on that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. So we still have a yes. little bit of time. Do you? Yeah. Uh, my question is. is yeah, that's good. Yes. <laughs> run, run down. Yeah. Um, my question is: Is there any confirmed ships between Ash and any of his female uh, counterparts? Um, shipping, for those of you who don't know, means are they dating? <laughs> and I would say he's ten. <laughs> I'm not sure about any of you boys in the room, but when you were ten. I'm pretty sure girls were the last thing you were thinking about. Um, so I'm going to say, I, no, I don't know anything about that. As Ash, ew. <laughs> no way. <laughs> You're welcome. Hello. Who makes you play Pokemon Go? Miss yes. Valor or Instinct? Team Valor. I thought it was the most ashy. <laughs> Plus it was red. So I yes. Questions. Okay. Uh, standpoint on the Pokemon rap and then oh. I can't actually remember my second Well, you, you will have time to remember. I love the Pokemon rap. I love that uh, oh, we had to keep learning it every time it played on the weekend. My second question is, uh, what's your standpoint on Ash constantly being his, uh, the, the constant age of 10? I like that he's 10. I mean, I think it's, first of all, Pokemon is kind of a comfort show. You go back and watch it and you know what you're in for. You know, you... Also, all of us, I love that magical sound from that, um, that we've all just went back in time for a minute, and it's the beginning of the panel. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Um, the, I, I think there's a part of us that stays 10 all the time. I mean, if you thought back to what you wanted to be when you were 10, and you think about where you are now, at any age, it kind of, you're grounded at 10. You know, you don't have that much responsibility, you don't have that many chores or homework, and you can really let your imagination go as to who you want to be when you grow up. And there's something wonderful about Ash being 10, because if he were 12 or 16, that's a whole nother thing going on there. Um, 10, we can all be 10 together, we're all kind of the same then. So, I, I don't know, I think he's more all of us at 10. So I like that he stays that, personally. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Uh, I want to know about you know, all the audience. What's your, what's your preference for jelly-filled donuts? Oh, I do like jelly-filled donuts, but I like raspberry jelly. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Oh, yeah? Are you talking Tim Hortons or other donuts around here? No, I'm talking here? about the not, the not. The not donuts. I like, um, yeah, the fact that they weren't donuts. I like rice balls, too. <laughs> so... Um, we also, uh, when I was working on the show, we didn't really question it that much because we didn't have a lot of time to yeah. go, like, what the heck are we doing? Why aren't we calling it a rice ball? But it always has been kind of funny, I think. Uh, and the second question, how much, uh, what's your favorite scene in a, in a Pokemon movie? Like, I personally like the, um, I, like what, I personally like the movie too, where, you know, Ash is, Team Rocket confronts with Ash, and then they, they say their motto, and then, and then Ash says, I got a catch. Does he say that? Yeah, it's like, it's like I should like, watch that. Like, I don't remember Ash, that. It's like Team Rocket is, you know, how Ash, you know, Ash is like, doing, you know, doing the journey of, you know, yeah. the, the legendary, yeah. the hero, for all, for all the turn to Ash. Yeah. When he's doing the journey, and then Team Rocket comes in the first island, and <laughs> Team Rocket interrupts, Team Rocket interrupts his journey. And, right. And and then Ash goes, I had to catch this on video. I had to catch this on video because. 
Do you actually remember that line? Or no, I don't. No. <laughs> because, you know, the thing about it is, I've, I think I've seen that movie actually once, um, maybe twice. Um, but so what happens when we record something is I walk in, I get the script, I go to the booth, the picture starts going, I'm looking, I'm skimming through to see what my line is, I'm listening to the beeps in my headphones, it goes, I say the line, it either matches up or it doesn't, we figure out if it works with the picture, sometimes we move on to the next line. Otherwise I do it again, maybe three times, and then we move on. And we pack it all into a, a session um, that's short. So. I don't know if I would have remembered the line to tell you it when I got out of the session. Because it's, there's no time to really digest it or figure it all out. That's where I think your acting training comes in. Because you have to figure out what your objective is, what you want from the other person, all that stuff, just skimming through and then acting it. So that's where my training comes in. But I don't remember all the lines because I have no time to think about them. So, yeah. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Hello. Hi, uh, just a quick question. Who is your favorite Team Rocket villain? Well, I, I should probably say Meowth because I, I shouldn't <laughs> pick between Jesse and James, right? But I do like the three of them together. It's a, it's a well-oiled machine, you know? And you, you can't really have one without the other two. So. Thank you. You're welcome. I also think they were the best part of the show. <laughs> um, it wouldn't have been as good without Team Rocket ever. That the humor that they brought to it, I thought was, I mean, it's classic, classic weirdo jokes. <laughs> so we have a few minutes. I'd like to talk a little bit about some of your other characters. Okay. Of course. Now I'm a huge Sailor Moon fan. Sailor Pluto is actually my favorite. Yes. Um, so I just started working on that. I'm in Sailor Moon Crystal. I'm not in the original. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, which I think was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you be able to do an attack of it's dead screen? Do you remember? Uh, you know, those things, for instance, I could do it. I don't know if it'll sound the same. Okay. But the, um, for those, I say it one time, and then they use it over and over. So I've only said that ever once. Mm -hmm. okay, so just fine. so you know. What is the thing? It's dead screen. That's all she says, all right? She says, yeah. Dead scream. Thank you. <laughs> Close, yes. right? A little anecdote. She's so calm and reserved that Very even nice. her stuff that's like crazy in the middle of battle is so calm. <laughs> Bizarre. And it, they've been doing the musicals in Japan for a while too. I so heard this, about that. This weekend. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. So this little anecdote, when you were talking about how you're auditioning for older women and stuff like that, yeah. it just popped into my head. So the latest musical, it was a Sailor Stars one, so you'll get there eventually. Yeah. Um, the Three Lights <laughs> uh, call her an old woman. And oh, she get, the right. Actress, she is old. <laughs> but the yeah. actress plays, she's like, they called me. Oh. <laughs> oh. I just, I just. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. That's funny. <laughs> now I, another one. I should look for that. Um, Slayers. Yes. You were. Um, Does anyone know Slayers? That's uh, super fun. They eat a lot. Piles of plates. What was your favorite thing about playing Amelia Will Tesla Sayrun? I love how she's so positive and also because she's up here. And, it's when you talk in a high voice for a long time, it makes you actually feel good. So it really elevates your mood. Um, and that was one of the greatest things. At one point I was working on Ash like during the day and Amelia in the evening and she was just so kooky and fun. Mm -hmm. And Ash is pretty normal. So in comparison, he's kind of boring to play. <laughs> and she was a little bit more interesting. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, so you've done like April O'Neil and mm -hmm. uh, other characters. And, and uh, I mean, you've been Nico Robin in One Piece and the four kids stuff. And right, as well. right. So do you prefer, uh, like, oh, I shouldn't say prefer. Do you find it easier to do North American cartoons as opposed to voice acting for Japanese cartoons? I, I like to work on anything that comes my way, mm -hmm. quite honestly. I like dubbing things, I like doing something that's prelay, which means uh, it is drawn later, you do the voices first. Um, I like working in any capacity. I think um, the, the challenge is to figure out how to create the character to the fullest extent. So when you're dubbing something, you have the parameters right there. I can look at a line and think it's one way, but Ash's eyebrows are in like this and his mouth is small, so you have to say it differently. When you're doing something prelay, you really can um, it's kind of sky's the limit, but depending on how you're directed. So um, all of it is a great challenge. Um, it doesn't really matter. I work on a couple shows now. I work on Welcome to the Wayne on Nickelodeon, 
and um, which is really cool. The animation style is amazing, and they've hidden all these things in the show, which I don't even fully understand yet. So um, that's been a great show to work on. I work on Ollie and Moon. I don't know how many of you have seen that. It's on Sprout for little kids. Uh, it's about two cats who travel around the world. Mm -hmm. I love that because you really get to travel, and you see different places because the backgrounds are all actual photos, and the characters are animated. So, which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I work on so many different things. Sometimes um, it's all a jumble, and it, I have to see it written down to remember. Oh, yeah, I'm working on that. Like, Cabaneri is a new show I'm working on that I forgot. They just announced that that's out now. That's an anime. Um, yeah, so I like the variety. I like to work. Very nice. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I just like to work. Good, good. Yeah. That's great. So one last one for you. Now, this one, I don't know what we'll think, but uh, take the characters of Sailor Pluto, mm -hmm. um, Amelia, April O'Neil, and uh, Nico. What Pokemon would you say best would go with each one of those characters? If they were to be a trainer and they would... Uh, Amelia's very magical, so maybe she could have the um, uh, Alakazam. Ala Alaka Is that what I mean? Alakazam. Yeah. Um, and then, that's a good one. Um, Nico Robin, she she could go with Haunter. Let's. I'll keep it all in that kind of. Um, who's the other one? Uh, April O'Neil. Squirtle. Squirtle? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, gosh, what's computer? Did it? No, oh, Squirtle. That's hilarious. Yeah, Squirtle. And another Squirtle. She'd have the whole Squirtle squad, <laughs> just for just for old times' sake. <laughs> and she'd have glasses too, um, sunglasses. Um, and what's the other? Sailor Pluto. Sailor Pluto. Oh, she'd have Lapras. Then she could just float around and stand on the back and be like, why am I out on the edge of space and time when I could be doing this? <laughs> um, yeah, how about that? That's amazing. But none of them have anything to do with actual things that Pokemon do. <laughs> of course, but there you go, that's okay. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much You're and welcome. from all of us here in Vancouver. And Thanks, uh, so I'll be down at my table. Um, what time is it now? Yeah, 2.15 till 5. I get, well, let's say 4.30 um, because the show ends at 5. So, oh, I just saw your costumes. Great job over there, you guys. Um, so, yeah, 2.15 to 4.30, I'll be there. So stop by. Um, and again, thank you so much for having me here. It's been so wonderful and so nice to see so many familiar faces that I've met over the years. Thanks, guys. Thank you both, too.